Welcome to this reflection for Tuesday of Holy Week as you journey with some of the Bannockburn churches. Jesus changed things. Water was turned into wine. A paralyzed man that four friends had to <clears throat> carry as they brought him to Jesus, he became able to walk. Zacchaeus, that greedy, cheating tax collector, gave back his ill-gotten gains. In his life on earth, Jesus changed people. Jesus changed people, he changed situations, and he changed despair into hope and possibility. Even after his death, his resurrection and his ascension into heaven, Jesus still changed people and situations. Saul of Tarsus was the scourge of early Christians. Saul obtained letters of authority to root out and destroy this virus, to track down and persecute these followers of the way of Jesus. However, on Saul's way to Damascus, he was changed. He had a mystical experience and encountered the risen Christ. And Saul became transformed into Paul, an apostle of Jesus. Jesus changed things, and Jesus changes things. Let's hear how he does this, this change that he brings about, in the reading for Tuesday of Holy Week. Reading from John's Gospel chapter 12, reading from verse 23. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Having transformed so much in life, Jesus now transforms death itself. He tells us that death is not the end. And he does it in the way that he so often did, by using illustrations and analogies from everyday life and so often from rural farming images. He says that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. This great truth is a powerful comfort as those we love reach the end of their days on earth. And also, this will bring comfort to us when our own time draws near. But these words also speak of the ongoing lived experience that followers of Jesus must embrace. Jesus is transforming death at the end of human life but he's also transforming death that we experience in other times and situations. And the story of the Christian church over 2,000 years of its history is a story of many deaths and then transformation and being born again. Jesus said, those who love their life lose it and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me, says Jesus, must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. 
there is little doubt that for the churches in Scotland today, so much of what we have known and loved is struggling. You might say is dying. We can try to hold on desperately to the grains of wheat that we have. That's very understandable. However, Jesus said that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it just remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Now, planting seeds or bulbs in cold, dark earth is, of course, an act of faith. Letting go of ways of doing church that we have known and loved for years and decades and looking for signs of what God's Spirit is doing in the world today, that's also very much an act of faith. And it's challenging. Jesus said, Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Perhaps on this Tuesday of Holy Week, as we once again journey with Jesus to the cross, perhaps this passage might be inviting us to prayerfully step forward and ask, Lord, what are you inviting us to let go of? And what new life will you place before us? And if that makes us anxious or even scares us, as I imagine it will, then we're not alone. Because Jesus felt something of that himself. Because he said, now is my soul troubled. But he went on to say, what should I say? Should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it's for this reason that I have come to this hour. Jesus came to show that life comes through dying to that which is old. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Let us pray. Lord, we know how the story goes. We know that this week leads to Friday and the cross, and then leads to Easter, resurrection and new life. We know that story and we love it. But Lord, we're not so sure how the story is to play out in our own time. Lord, should we say, Father, save us from this hour? It seems, O oh God, that Jesus is saying that if we're serving him, we must follow him in the way of the cross. So Lord, with fear and trembling, but also in faith, we ask that you will help us to listen for your voice which is ever with us. Help us to listen for the promptings of your spirit. Help us to look for the new life and new ways of being church. Life, new life and new ways that lie beyond the dying of the old. Jesus, Lord of both the cross and the empty tomb, lead us, we pray, through death to new life. Amen. In the pulp there is a flower In the seed an apple tree Cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone see in our end is
is our beginning in our time infinity in our doubts there is believing in our life eternity in our death the resurrection at the last of victory unrevealed until its season something god alone can see